channel where we explore the most perplexing and chilling cases that hunt the corridors of crime. Today, we're diving into the heart-wrenching world of fetal abductions, crime that shot the conscience and defy comprehension. Prepare yourself for an eye-open exploration of these tragic events as we seek to understand the psychology behind such unthinkable crimes. But be warned, the stories we will uncover are not for the faint of heart. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you won't miss out on our deep dives into the world of crime. Prayers to the family. In Belleville, Illinois, a woman named Tiffany Hall committed an unthinkable act of violence against her pregnant friend, Jamela Tunstall. On a chilling day, Hall struck Tunstall repeatedly on the head with a table leg and then, in a bathtub, gruesomely cut the fetus from her womb. Tunstall, 23 years old at the time, bled to death. Hall then discarded her friend's body in an East St. Louis lot. Just hours later, Hall told police she had given birth to a stillborn child, presenting them with the dead fetus. She, however, refused to be examined at a hospital, raising suspicions. In a sickening twist, Hall visited the father of two of Tunstall's children and the unborn child three days later. She managed to convince him that Tunstall had asked her to pick up the children and Tunstall's vehicle. The father, unsuspecting, complied. This was the last time he would see his children. Hall's gruesome story started to unravel on September 21, 2006, about a week after Tunstall's death. She confessed to her boyfriend that she had killed a pregnant woman and stolen the fetus. He immediately reported her to the police. The bodies of the three children were found two days later, hidden in a washer and dryer in the East St. Louis apartment where the children had lived with their mother. In the face of such monstrous crimes, Hall was brought to trial. One of her attorneys, James Gomrick, revealed that while she was mentally fit to stand trial, Hall had unresolved mental health issues and an IQ in the mid-70s. Despite this, she pleaded guilty to all five charges against her four counts of murder and one count of intentional homicide in the death of the fetus. In a plea deal that allowed her to avoid the death penalty, Tiffany Hall was sentenced to life in prison without parole on June 9, 2008. The aftermath of this crime was profound. Some of Tunstall's relatives, including her mother Sandra Myers, expressed they had already forgiven Hall. Myers stated that taking one life would not have been justice for losing the lives of others. I have to forgive her she said. This case serves as a chilling reminder of the depths of human depravity. A woman, driven by motives unclear, committed acts of unimaginable brutality against her friend and her friend's children. The legal outcome, while not bringing back the lives lost, hopefully brings some closure to the bereaved family. This has been an exploration into the dark side of human nature, a journey into a crime that shocked the community and a legal system grappling with how to deal with such heinous acts. What could possibly drive a person to commit such a heinous crime? This is a question that haunts the mind when confronted with the chilling tale of Marlon Ochoa Lopez, a 19-year-old pregnant woman whose life was brutally taken in an unthinkable act of violence. In the spring of 2019, Marlon Ochoa Lopez, a young expectant mother, met Clarissa Figueroa on a Facebook page for pregnant women. After Clarissa's adult son died of natural causes, she deceived her family, proclaiming she was pregnant, even going as far as to post an ultrasound and photos of a room decorated for a baby on her Facebook page. Clarissa and Marlon first met in person in early April, when Marlon visited the Figueroa's home. She left unscathed on this occasion, but tragically it wouldn't be her last visit. Coaxed by the promise of free baby clothes, Marlon returned three weeks later, unknowingly walking into a trap that would cost her life. While Desiree Figueroa, Clarissa's daughter, distracted Marlon with a photo album, Clarissa took advantage of the diversion to attack Marlon from behind, strangling her with a cord. Once Marlon ceased to show signs of life, the unthinkable happened. Clarissa, with a butcher knife, cut the baby from Marlon's womb. The mother and daughter then wrapped Marlon's body in a blanket, placed it in a plastic bag, and discarded it in a garbage can outside their home. Later that day, Clarissa dialed 911, feigning the distress of a mother whose newborn wasn't breathing. 
First responders arrived to find the child blue. Clarissa, a former certified nursing assistant, deceitfully passed the baby off as her own when she took him to Christ Medical Center. The baby, named Giovanni Lopez, tragically died two months later. For three weeks, the baby's true identity remained a secret. Marlon's body lay undiscovered in a trash can at the Figueroa's home while the police investigated her disappearance. It was only after a DNA test confirmed the baby was Marlon's that detectives discovered her body. Desiree Figueroa, 29, pleaded guilty to one count of first-degree murder, agreeing to testify against her mother, Clarissa Figueroa, for a reduced 30-year sentence. Both Figueroas were indicted on multiple counts, including murder, kidnapping, dismembering a body, and concealing a homicide in the deaths of Marlon and her baby, Giovanni Lopez. Last year, Clarissa Figueroa's boyfriend, Piotr Bobak, pleaded guilty to one count of obstruction of justice for aiding in the cover-up of the murders. He received a four-year prison sentence, but due to the three years and eight months already served in jail, he has since been released. This story serves as a stark reminder of the depths of depravity to which humans can sink. It's a chilling tale of deceit, betrayal and unimaginable cruelty. It forces us to confront the harsh reality of the world we live in, where innocence and trust can be exploited by those with malevolent intentions. The loss of Marlon Ochoa Lopez and her baby, Giovanni Lopez, is a tragedy that will forever be remembered, a poignant testament to the fragility of life and the darkness that lurks in the corners of our world. What drives a person to commit the unthinkable? To take not just one life, but two? The tale of Taylor Renee Parker is a chilling exploration of this very question. In the autumn of 2020, in the small town of New Boston, Texas, a heinous crime shook the community to its core. A woman, Reagan Michelle Simmons, was found dead in her home. She had been 34 weeks pregnant, but her unborn baby was no longer in her womb. The details that would unfold in the aftermath of this discovery would send shockwaves across the nation. Taylor Renee Parker, a woman who had been pretending to be pregnant herself, was the orchestrator of this horrific crime. She held a gender reveal party, told her boyfriend and others she was expecting. And on that fateful day of October 9th, she claimed she was going to a hospital in Idabel, Oklahoma, to pre-register for labor to be induced. However, instead of a joyous occasion, a 911 call reported the gruesome discovery of Simmons's body. Texas state troopers later conducted a traffic stop, finding Parker with a baby in her lap, the umbilical cord still attached. It appeared as though she'd given birth, but hospital staff quickly determined the chilling truth. Parker had not given birth. Instead, she admitted to a physical altercation with Simmons and the abduction of the unborn child from the victim's body. The authorities concluded that Parker was responsible for the deaths of both Simmons and her baby due to her inability to provide the necessary care to the newborn. A Bowie County jury deliberated for about an hour and found Parker guilty of capital murder. The same jury was then responsible for choosing her sentence death or life in prison without parole. After a gruelling trial lasting 25 days and including 142 witnesses, the jury handed down the death sentence. With that, Parker became one of only seven women on Texas's death row. Despite a strong defence case that highlighted Parker's traumatic issues, the jury's decision was clear. The victim's family expressed relief at the verdict. Jessica Brooks, the mother of the victim, expressed gratitude for justice served. Emily Simmons, the victim's sister, was overwhelmed with happiness, stating that Parker had been a burden in their lives for too long. This chilling case of Taylor Renee Parker serves as a stark reminder of the depths to which individuals can descend when driven by desperation and delusion. It's a tale of deceit and murder, of a life tragically cut short, and an innocent one that never had the chance to begin. It's a story that forces us to question the limits of human behavior and the lengths to which our justice system will go to ensure that such heinous acts do not go unpunished.